Hello, Zero K fans. Zero CT3. And before I get started, quick news on that economy tutorial I was talking about a while ago, as well as a small public service announcement. <clears throat> so, they're kind of the same thing. The economy tutorial that I talked about before is a three minute economy tutorial that I have been working on. The good news is that it's done. The bad news and the public service announcement is that I can't export it from the program I'm using. Specifically, do not use VSDC Video Editor. Unless, maybe if you're doing something that's like one or two small clips, it's not a big deal. It seems like that's, that's what it's designed for, as far as I can tell, as far as all the promotional materials and everything seem to show one or two scenes, like you film something as a home video, you add a couple effects on top, you spit it out, done. I don't even know if it can do that, but I'm guessing that's all it can do. <clears throat> trying to handle even 20 clips that none of which are more than one or two on top of each other at a time It's laggy as hell and then when you actually go to use I mean it crashes half the time And then when you go to export it good luck even exporting three minutes worth of video content It'll probably crash. I, I tried twice before starting this cast because I just don't have time to try it again and <clears throat> It would crash like halfway or three quarters of the way through and that was it I had to start all over again, because it doesn't export in parts. If you try to chop it out into parts, it'll do that after exporting. So it'll have to do the entire thing, and then it'll cut it up, rather than doing half of it, and then allowing you to stitch it together with another editor, which is what I was planning on doing to at least make up for the problem. Not to mention, I think it might actually be trying to internally store everything at 600 kilobits per second, despite the fact that my video file source were like 8,000, and my output's meant to be 2,500. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't screw up for me when it, if and when it actually does sort it itself out. But yeah, if anyone's doing video editing more complex than a home video and a couple effects, and you don't want to pay for it, Blender. I've used it before. It works fine. It's a little... or Okay, two years ago, it was a little clunky. I don't know. I mean, wow. No. I did it for a pre-release of Acron. Yeah, that was actually three and a half years ago. Yeah, so almost four years ago, it was a bit clunky. I'm sure it's gotten better. They've done a lot of interface stuff. I haven't even played with it for a few versions now. But yeah, Blender is probably the way to go. It's possibly overkill for most people. But yeah, if you're doing something with a few dozen clips and you want to stitch that all together and make a nice video, Blender is pretty good for that. Anyway, that's the public service announcement. That's also me getting off my chest why I am in a bit of a bad mood right now. Because that video is done and it looks okay. I think, it, I think it's okay as an economy tutorial. I mean, there might be things that I might be missing or might could have been better phrased. I'm not totally sure. But I think that as far as an economy tutorial goes, it's probably suitable. I don't know. I'll let you guys see it, assuming I'm able to export it. If not, well, then I'm going to follow my own advice and reconstruct the entire thing in Blender sometime tomorrow. So, yeah. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Hopefully it does export properly last time and it will actually be the proper quality. I, however, am not particularly hopeful in that regard. My one salvation possibly is that a new version of VSTC was released, which might allow me to at least get this out of the program and never use it again. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as for the game itself, we're going to be watching a game between Orphilius and Philthos, and by the way, every game that I'm casting today is a game that was on someone's request. Like people were requesting a few games, and... I asked for it last time because there was a few games last time. They were okay, but there was some that... I mean, there was one with Dancer that just ended up because spectators were heckling. And I mentioned before, don't do that. I mentioned again, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't heckle. Just, if you're spectating, just keep your mouth shut. Or at least talk to other spectators. Don't talk to the players. Don't disturb the players. It wasn't actually spec cheating, but still, don't bug the players. Now, this game, however, is probably okay. The next two are probably okay as well. We're going on Red Comet, a map we have not seen in a long time. If, well, for the sake of completeness, since I always do this, let's go over it. So this map is pretty healthy economically. It's fairly small, but there's a lot of metal, as can be clearly seen, plus 2.3 everywhere. Both players are starting out in the safer defensive spots, the other option usually being the center. People only go to the northwest, the start box is being along the west side entirely and along the east side entirely. People only go to the northwest or southeast if they're intending to cheese, because this defensive position, that is the most common start position. Followed by the center, but the center, it's kind of risky. If you can pull it off, you get a much safer take of the southwest or northeast. But if you fail to pull it off, then you're really vulnerable, because you have this south area, this choke one that gets you, and then the north as well. It's a bit risky, but I've seen it done more in 2v2 than 1v1. It doesn't happen a lot in 1v1. But yeah, this area here basically is designed as a rush strategy against the common start position. 
Now, that is said, both players going for light vehicle, and let's watch them play. So Ophelius starting out with nothing, actually. Oh, there we go. Darts. Darts for Ophelius. Darts for Failthos. Both players going for... Actually, no. Orphelius going for Slasher. <clears throat> Orphelius looking like they want to go for the portable defense. No, Defender as well. I was about to say, they might go for Slasher in lieu of Defenders, but they are in fact doing both. Interesting choice. Orphelius, on the other hand, they are focusing more heavily on economy. They are getting Defenders up, but they are focusing on constructing everything, getting economy up. The Mason just being completed for Orphelius, while Failthos has had theirs up for about half a minute now. Not doing a huge amount, but they also don't have a huge amount of resources. They're, looks like they're focusing on building up metal extractors fairly quick. They aren't focusing on their resources elsewhere. Orphelius, on the other hand, is spreading themselves out a little bit more thin. And that's... Well, that actually might be okay. They do have their defenses up, so both players do have defenses up. And Felthos... Ooh, they might actually lose this metal extractor. If Orphelius can position correctly... But no, Orphelius does not take it. Does not want to take that risk. That was a wise choice. That would not have worked out well. The commander moving into a really bad position for that dart. Ironically, the commander is actually putting up solar players in such a position that darts would have more room to attack from, not less. But it looks like Felthos... Are they blocking this off? Because they do not appear to be blocking... Nope, they're not blocking it off at all. In fact, they're setting it up very nicely for a dart to just rush in. Can this defender... Okay, the defender can defend well enough. But yeah, if the dart can survive... Well, not a dart, but a scorcher, for example, could survive through that defender... It would have a Solar Collector that it could hide behind, so the Defender would start here, hits the Solar Collector, does not hit the unit behind it. I was actually playing a game with Google Frog yesterday where it was on Flooded Valley, which, for those of you who don't remember, it's this big, big bowl of water with a bit of land around the sides. And we are both Amphib, and my factory got killed by my own Defender trying to destroy ducks on the other side of the factory. So yeah, defenders can actually be quite treacherous that way if they don't have a completely clear sight. Or a completely clear line of sight. Both players now switching over to Scorchers, although Orphelthos is jumping the gun a bit, going for levelers, assuming Orphelius is going Scorchers, and they are assuming correctly. Orphelius has, in fact, gone for the Scorchers and continuing to build up. They're actually going to be quite vulnerable. The Scorchers coming in from the north side. Orphelius does spot them on their radar. They do have a nice radar coverage of the area, so they know exactly what's going on. Orphelius will be coming over here, taking, trying to take that out. The Lotus should be able to take care of a couple of them. Failthos, I don't know what they're trying to go for. Because they don't know very well what's in Failthos' base. They know a bit of what's in their base, but not a huge amount. And Orphelius gets a nice drop on Failthos' forces, but unfortunately does not retreat properly. And Failthos' forces able to get away, but Orphelius does not lose any Scorchers. So that was, that was okay. No one lost anything. Orphelius is still a little bit pressured, but overall, nothing was lost. Orphelius able to repair, and Felthos moving back to repair as well. In fact, at this point, Orphelius might be able to... Although I don't think they're aware. No, they're not aware. Nope, not aware at all. They can't see where they are. I mean, they might be able... If they were paying attention to the radar, they should be able to see where the Scorchers have gone off to. But Orphelius, they're going to be dealing with repaired commanders too. So both players have repaired their, command, repaired their Scorchers. And that's that. But Failthos, like I said, they have levelers now. They have a few levelers. No, just just the one. Never mind. Must have cancelled that. So yeah, they have the leveler. They have... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> they have the Lotus. Well, yeah, they have the Lotus in the south. So the Scorchers should be able to deal a bit of damage. Dark, I'm going to scout out. Orphelius will be losing this dart for for a good reason. Actually, will it? Oh, that dart had... Oh, could have gone the line of sight. Could have gone right here. But it didn't quite manage to do so. The Scorch House, however, will level this entire area. Pretty quick. Mason should go down right away. There it goes. Lotus will go down right after. And then following that, of course, the rest of that, the Defender. And that was a really good raid. Yeah, get rid of the energy. Get rid of that energy. Orphelius needs to do that. At the same time, failed us going in for a counter raid and achieving nothing. Okay, not quite nothing. They did kill one of Orphelius' Scorchers. But a Scorchers... For Ophelius, none lost. This entire area destroyed and no Scorchers lost in the process. That was a very clean raid. Well done, Orphelius. Failthos, however, is still on par. They're still ahead. They have been expanding a lot faster than Orphelius has been. Orphelius not doing a bad thing by, by attacking the way they did. I mean, it's always good to attack, if you, especially if you have something that clean. That was a great harassment. And actually, they could harass the main base too. This area here, they hit it and then run away. 
But this area here where you normally attack, Veltas, they know this game well enough. They know that Orphelius wants to attack this expansion. Because attacking the main base, that's what you do last. So Veltas defends the front area that Orphelius is likely to attack. And that's something which ultimately is... Actually, not going to matter. From the looks of it, Orphelius not falling for that. Orphelius is going to the next level. Unfortunately, really poorly timing that and realizing a bit too late. I think, I mean, okay, you can see on the radar, they do know exactly where Orphelius' force, sorry, they know where Failthos' forces is. Orphelius' commander goes down. Ouch. This is when Failthos, they need to get, well, actually, kind of careful. They know where Failthos, they know where Orphelius is going and Orphelius going to bum rush the leveler and take it out. Don't go for revenge kill, Orphelius. No, don't go for the revenge kill. Okay, good. So I'll just say, it looked like Orphelius was going to go for the defender nest. Bad idea. Go for everything else. This is the one time where it's actually... And Orphelius knows it. They have enough radar information. They know this is true. They can just attack everything else. Better be careful about this leveler, though. With this Scorcher support, it's going to be tricky. Though Those Scorchers are going to die. Ouch. That's two down right away. And Orphelius trying to flank this expansion. Still going for the expansion. It is not the right thing to do. They're going to lose a lot of Scorchers in the process. They already have. They've already lost five Scorchers. Like I said, this is an unusual time in that the main base, although not right now because there were more Lotuses built, but right as they started attacking, the main base was a better target. Weird though that may be, because that usually isn't the case. In this particular case, it has been. But yeah, Felthos remains ahead economically, ahead militarily. Orphelius losing those Scorchers was a big blow, and Felthos building that leveler was a great idea. The first leveler got overwhelmed, but the second one... I mean, the problem with the Scorchers were right next to each other, and the levelers are entirely based on area of effect. That's how they work. That's... There's no other way they work than level than area of effect. That's why there are riots. So if you spread your units out, you're safe. Well, one of them isn't, but the rest of them are fine. Given the numerical advantage, that would have worked out okay. Orphelius with that first slasher... Oh, no, not quite first slasher. Is it the first one? Yeah, it is the first one. The other one's actually apparently belonging to Feldos. The first Lasher coming in there, helping to break areas, but Wolverines, that's really what's going to help break the area, break that Defender Nest. And that's actually doing a decent job. The level are forcing it back. With no real counters, there are no Ravagers or... Yeah, Ravagers would be the thing to use against Levelers. Or Slashers, that's another great thing. Slashers are being a better idea, in fact, but I don't see either of those from Orphelius. In fact, Orphelius is not on repeat build. They are actually wasting metal. They're about to access, they are accessing now. As Feldos continues to build up, this is a big reason why Orphelius is having a hard time. They've been they've been attacking well, they've been doing a fair amount of damage, but they haven't been expanding as well as they could be. I, their commander is dead, so that doesn't help, but they're they don't how many masons do they have? They have two, and one of them's idle in the main base. Well, Feldas has two, and they're idle in the main base. So I suppose Oh no, never mind. Feldas has four, two of which are idle in the main base. The other two are actually doing stuff. Including rebuilding. But at this point, Orphelius has pulled ahead, and now they're attacking the main base, which at this point is not the wisest choice. But still, why? Actually, no, compared to all the other places they can attack, yeah, it's probably the wisest choice. Get rid of the caretakers, and then get rid of the factory. No, going for the energy structures instead. Also a good plan. Actually, it's something that I was that was pointed out. I, if anyone watched me learning with Sackdoth, or my learning with Sackdoth video, one thing that Sackdoth pointed out is you want to go for... Oh, no, actually... Orphelia's not so much doing this, but you want to go for energy, especially shutting down solar plants, but killing energy if you can, more than metal in the main base. And you kill... Oh, these, these Scorchers are dead. That was a bad move. That was a really bad move. But yeah, you kill energy in the main base, you kill metal in the expansions, because the main base is going to reclaim everything, so the metal cost is nothing. And Feldhaus not even really forced to excess at this point. They're just building up. They have, they have their commander. They're building another factory just in case. They already started building a second light vehicle factory because they figured the first one would be destroyed. And surprisingly, Orphelius didn't actually go for that. They went for all the metal extractors instead. But Feldas at this point, they have the energy to use the metal, and Orphelius is not using all the metal they have. They're not even they're using 30 of it in the factory, which is just good. I suppose it makes up for the fact that they lost all their scorchers, but that was that could have been scorchers that weren't dead. Still, they have a bunch of levelers now. They have about five levelers coming in. With another handful of Scorchers, and the Wolverines continuing to bear down on this base. And now, two Light Vehicle Factories, because why not? So, Veltos at this point, double the Light Vehicle Factories. This doesn't happen in 0k ever. This is kind of a novel experience. You only see it when, well, the player is worried they're going to lose their main factory. Normally, though, you get one factory of different type. 
So this is... This makes sense given the context, but I should emphasize, this is very unusual. You never see the same factory twice in 0k. You only see, you see assist builds. That's how people do it. The game really encourages that because you don't get... You don't get much faster with the factory until you get like 4 or 5 caretakers. At which point the getting off the factory time dominates. And you also don't get... Usually, you don't get the variety of units you would get if you actually built more factories, but at this point, Orphilius just bearing down on Feldas' base. I mean, this really has gone down to the fact that Feldas did get some good raids in early on, so Orphilius was expanding a lot, but... Fe or, sorry, Feldas was expanding a lot. Orphilius has been countering that every time. But this backup factory about to go down, however, Orphilius losing a lot of units in the process. Many of their levelers going down, and no slashers as support... Scorchers as well coming up, and Orphilius is taking most of the map. They've taken most of the south side of the map. Not so much the northwest, but they have they have a they have an advantage when it comes to Mexes. Not so much when it comes to reclaim or when it comes to territory or anything like that. Well, actually, territory they kind of do. They have Failthoss around, but Failthoss could easily break this if let's see. Lotus, Lotus, Wolverine's coming in. Oh no, never mind. The levelers won't have much chance. Those Wolverines being pretty much the difference maker at this point. This Lotus should die, though. Yeah, there we go. But other than that, no. That that leveler is dead, and all that is in Orphelius' territory. So we should see more reclaim. Orphelius' main weakness at this point is they've just now started to use the metal up. They have so much metal here, they've just now started using it up. I am surprised no one's gone for an air switch yet. I am genuinely surprised. This is 11 minutes into the game, and we don't see any... Thunderbird usage from Orphelia, sorry, from Failthos. We don't see, any, like, really, Thunderbird usage against all this stuff here. Against the Wolverines. Or just, actually, no, in Thunderbirds, I think. I think Phoenixes would do fine. A couple Phoenixes to burn them out. Granted, there have been a lot of defenders, so I can understand the reticence, but still, it seems like it could be an idea. Or go for Gunship. Go for Rapier instead. And harass around the sides of the map, where it isn't well defended. Like, as soon as you get past the defenders, Rapiers would have a field day. I don't think we're, I don't think Feldas knows that though. Feldas right now they have yeah they don't have a huge amount of knowledge back here, but if they knew that they would probably go for it. Although on the other hand they're doing fine with light vehicles so I don't know it's unusual but understandable in this case. It would kind of you'd be forcing it at this point. Although on the other hand Feldas not breaking through here, yeah some air support would actually not probably be unwelcome. And they're doing a decent amount of damage but still they're losing a lot of units. Or at least being pushed back. But they persist. Fail thoughts continuing to go back to the base, trying to deal more damage, losing units for very little return. As Orphilius goes in to sweep around and flank, catching Feldos' Ravagers and killing a couple of them for basically free. Two of them for... Yeah, three of them for almost free. Losing a few more Scorchers each time, though, and that... Still, that Ravager pack, that was a lot of Ravagers down for, what, four Scorchers? Four Ravagers, five Ravagers for four Scorchers. Five Ravagers for five Scorchers. Wow, that's making cost. Massively making cost. And more Wolverine attacks into the main, or into not main base, but into Failthos' primary expansion. Orphilius being pretty effective. They've been very cost effective this entire game. I mean, that raid over in the center was really cost effective. That attack here. There have been a couple, a couple blunders where they lost, they lost way too many Scorchers, I think. Uh, there was a few times that they went to the main base and went it here. They just lost half their Scorchers. And Orphilius is the one going for the gunship plant. They're going for the rapiers. And they're going around the back to try to tear everything apart. Taking out these raptors because why not? They're, they're getting in the way. Getting rid of a mason though. But still, these rapiers will have no problem dealing with all this. And there aren't a lot of defenders built up other than the defender nest. This is a common strategy on this map. And I can see why Orphilius has figured out a way to get around it and failed us. Normally, what you'd have by now is also this these three metal extractors. You'd have most of this area too, a lot of the center of the map. You wouldn't quite, it wouldn't seem this cornered. But otherwise, yeah, this is pretty standard. But Orphilius able to just completely break it down, with the Wolverines being the direct counter and then the Rapiers going around the sides where basically everything isn't. But the Rapiers, unfortunately, not going in. Orphilius has. That's one thing, Orphilius has not been reacting as quickly as necessary to save all of their units. It's a small thing, but it has... it would add up, except for the fact that they also have been cost-effective where it counts. They've lost a few units here and there, but where it counts, they've actually managed to deal a lot of damage. Without taking a lot of damage in return. 
And at this point, they have a decent radar coverage, not a huge radar coverage. I think the most clever thing is the fact that they avoided what normally is you'd attack in the center. They know enough this map to know that this is going to be a defender nest. They had radar. They knew what was there. They knew to go around it, and that the main base would probably be a juicier target. And they went for it. The only problem was that they didn't completely go for it with the main base. They at one point went for the main base, and that was a good blow. But they didn't completely go for it. And I think killing the factory would have helped a bit. But it doesn't matter. I mean, why can't I criticize them? They won. Failthos, on the other hand, I think with Failthos, it looked like they were playing Red Comet very habitly, very in a very habit habitual way. They were playing it as they'd always played it, and it's pretty clear that that doesn't work. This defender nest strategy, it can get cornered pretty quick. The Wolverines are quite effective against dealing with it. Losing this area here, and there wasn't a whole lot of defenses around the back to stop Scorcher Rush from getting in. And then after that, yeah, it was just no real claim, claim to the southeast. No real push down to try to get... Because normally what happens, and more usually what happens is there'll be a split like this along this angle here. So you'll see the defender nest around here, or it might start here and then end here. But you'll see the Defender Nest over in the north, and you might see one in the south. But overall, it's a much more even split. Not this area here, and then everything else is either open or to the opponent. So Orphelius basically had an oppressive advantage from the start, thanks to that attack. And while they were neck and neck for a while, it worked out in Failthos' favor. And at this point, Failthos, though, I should commend. No excess metal, while Orphelius had 2kx, or 3kxs. The Orphelius, for the most part, had less metal up until... Looks like the main base raid, roughly. Yeah, around... Actually, no, not even. That was before. Because that looks like that was around the same time. But anyway, that was... That was that. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be... Actually, do you have... No, it's just that's... There's no delta stat. There's no metal income over time. A little annoying. That should be nice if that was his stat. Regardless, we're going to be moving on to another game. This next one is going to be... Give me something. Snuggle Base and Aquanim on Into Battle. That rather odd-looking map. Rather odd-looking and simple-looking map. But we've seen a lot of different play on that map, so... Simple-looking doesn't necessarily mean simple. Anyway... Be back with that in just a moment, so stay tuned.